Hey everyone, I hope all of you had an amazing weekend so far and welcome to Kayan Al-Bashar or at least the backup seal for Kayan Al-Bashar. But anyway, today's video is going to be a little bit different, maybe also a little bit narcissistic because, well, it's something that I've always been kind of intrigued by and that's mostly how like other creators get inspiration to build what they build. But as I said, today is going to be a little bit of a narcissistic video because I'm just going to talk about like techniques that I used to get inspired because it also has been asked like how do you get inspired to basically build and I know that that sometimes is a little bit of like a struggle of like getting that inspiration to actually start building. Well, of course, just the random thing about building or inspiration where you sometimes just wake up with it or, you know, you, this is a little bit more maybe a little bit of a, like a meeting, but uh, sometimes when I just get out of the shower, I also have to, like this big explosion of inspiration. I'm not going to really go into that because it's just so random and it's not something I do consciously. But anyway, for the first technique, which is basically how Kayan Al-Bashar started, and that is to mindlessly search images. I am a very visually minded person, so I didn't really have a clue on like what to build. I didn't start off with an Arabian style zoo, actually. I just started, like I wanted to build something mystical and fancy like because Ozaru and Tianopolis are not completely grounded in reality but they are certainly a lot more realistic than Kayan Al-Bashar. So I just thought like alright I want to do something completely different, something completely like magical, mystical, fantasy like. So that's basically how it started, I just searched for fancy city. Just search for like fancy lands, fancy concept art, mostly concept art actually because concept art is usually the places or the type of images which can get pretty crazy. So I just, you know, I didn't go for specific images and a lot of my inspiration actually does come from images because again I'm a very visually minded person so for me it really works a lot to just have an image to basically work off a little bit, not completely copy, but you know, have like, oh, I can use this part of that image or this part of that image. But again, like it's not that when, well, in the concept stage of Kayan Al-Bashar that I really search for things like I want to build this. It's more like I want to find a nice image that I could take like maybe one element off. So, I mean, it's pretty obvious Kayan Al-Bashar is completely made out of floating islands. It's an Arabian slash Islamic style zoo. Again, it didn't start out this way. Actually, when it comes to like the floating parts, that was basically just like, I have, well, let's just say the first image that sort of jump started that was an image of um, a massive cliffside. So the original idea for Oza or for Kayan Abashar was very similar to Ozaru with this like massive cliffside, but then this image that I found randomly just had this weird uh, huge rock pillar as well. And then my brain just thought like that's a really nice feature, you know, those giant rock pillars. I think those reminded me of like avatar like the airbender one not the one with the green or blue people but it somehow reminded me of that and then i just thought you know airbenders floating stuff so somehow you know that one image just sparked something with floating then i just thought like oh those pillars look really nice if there were like floating rocks surrounding it to really give off that mystical feel and i mean we all know by now the pillars obviously didn't really go through with it but the floating part was kept and basically transformed into what we're building right now or how Kayan Abashar is going to be sort of structured right now so Kayan Abashar really just started out as just some random images that my brain somehow stuck together because well the human brain is strange in that way because we like I think it's scientifically proven that like the human brain looks for patterns, looks for similarities. 
So yeah, Guyana was shot really just a random bunch of images before I really got the inspiration from those images to build something. So also with like the Arabian slash Islamic style. I think the first image that sparked that a little bit was actually of like an maybe Mediterranean style castle. Like a sandstone like castle but definitely European. And then I basically combined the floating aspect with the well castle which might have sort of transformed into the palace that we started building but of course that was still like a medieval European style building and then I don't know how I got there but I sort of probably found like an image of like a floating Indian temple I think I don't know because I think I've cleared some images but anyway so basically I got those kinds of images my brain just mixed them all together and that's how Ken Albashar started. That's how I completely started with like the inspiration of like building a floating city. And yeah, it all just came from me just mindlessly typing like fantasy city art in Google Images. Because this is also where Google Images helps if you like go in there mindlessly. Because if you search for an image, you maybe find one that's interesting, click on it, then it gives you, usually gives you like eight suggested images that look like similar but are different also in a way. And then I usually just click on like the suggested images for like three times and then you really get just random stuff that you originally didn't think about. Because that's really easily to do to just, you know, you have an idea and you don't really veer away from that idea. But you also don't get any like outside in well inspiration to go about that idea. You just, you know, you're kind of stuck then. So then it just helps to just, you know, look at other things. To basically find something that might be a little bit similar but also is different enough to spark inspiration. Like that's the biggest thing about getting inspiration. It's just that initial spark. Usually after that initial spark, everything, well, at least for me, usually goes well, but it's really just hard to sometimes get that initial spark. So just sometimes don't really search for things that you know or things that might be like within like the realm of like things that you want to build. Just sometimes go off the deep end, just find some weird images well not weird but just images that you didn't really think about or just things that you didn't really think about so yeah just um sometimes let your mind go numb and just search for random stuff and you who knows sometimes it might work and give you a huge load of inspiration and a huge load of things like oh i didn't think about building something like this i might want to build something like this and then you just goes off in the deep end or at least it usually does for me and I mean so far it works out well because uh, Kayan al is uh, is becoming something I'm still uh, I want to quickly get back into like the original zoo but it still does have that brownish tint so we still have to wait but yeah anyway so that was it for the first technique I'm also I'm, I'm a little bit wondering if I should like number tape techniques because they usually blend together a lot but yeah the second technique is a little bit more research minded or also just like a little bit accidental just like the first one like inspiration you can't really plan it out but some like some things that i do i find out like oh this usually jump starts inspiration for me and for me it works out to also do just different things you know if you don't really have inspiration to build something, maybe not endlessly watch or well, watch, not endlessly stare at your screen because then it's just like your brain, your brain, your brain <laughs> just goes numb and just doesn't come up with anything because it's just like, yeah, what do you want me to do? <laughs> so sometimes it just helps to do something different maybe within like the realm of like things that you want are building for me what helps is like oh i watch a documentary it doesn't really have to relate to what i'm building actually like recently i've watched a documentary on like i 
think the name is like the War of the Roses. So yeah, that's probably like uh, as different as you can get from Kayan Albashar. But somehow this documentary on the War of the Roses just made me think of like, oh, this is medieval England. Or, well, a little bit more like in between medieval and renaissance like it's 13 14 on i have i have no clue when it comes to dates so it's somewhere in there somewhere after like a thousand uh, ad but this just made me think like oh medieval style things crusades crusades brought a lot back from the levant and just from islamic culture oh they also brought back bad houses I might want to build a bathhouse right now. So, yeah, and then I also, like, this helps a lot in my case, but I also like to just build other, or just play other city type builders. So, when it comes to, well, what we're building right now, or what we've built in the last video, I really like the NO series, and I still believe NO 1400 is the best NO game that's being put out there. But anyway, so with Anno 1400, you do have like the, well, Orient, as they call it in-game. I don't know if that's like a socially acceptable word now. I don't know. I heard that there, or I read that there are some like negative inclinations to that word. But in the game, it's called the Orient. And I really like the style of buildings that they have in-game there. And I haven't actually played the game in a long time. Like the same goes with Tianopolis and Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Like I don't really play the game a lot anymore but the well the bathhouse thing from the war of the roses documentary made me think of that game and then i thought like oh you know, i really liked the buildings in that game and then i just looked up all the buildings and that's basically how the caravansary started because the caravansary is sort of also an npc in that game but the building in game is completely different than what we have built. It's completely different to what might be realistically or accurate. Because in game is just sort of a castle with buildings attached to it. So I thought like, is this real? And then I went to do doing some research and found out, you know, how a real caravansary looked like. And I got inspired by that of like, oh, it's completely different than what I thought. So that made me want to build it. But it was just that initial thing of like doing something completely different. Also lately I've been watching a documentary on the Ottoman harem, I think. Yeah, it was the Ottoman harem. And I just thought like, oh, a harem is usually like sort of like separate entity in a palace. So I might want to build something similar to that now. Yeah, I'm still going to stick with what uh, you guys say in the poll that I recently put up which I think by the time I'm recording this commentary it's the ruins that are in first followed by the aquatic and then the mining ruins or not mining ruins mining habitat so I'm going to still stick with that but you might see something like a bathhouse coming up or well mostly something with like a golden dome so yeah sometimes it's just doing the random stuff and then doing some research because you don't believe how the random stuff is accurate and then you find out that it isn't and then yeah that's really just how the caravans restarted it's just uh you know it's, it doesn't help to sometimes just mindlessly and just well mindlessly to just endlessly stare at your screen hoping that well inspiration comes like inspiration is something that is kind of luck based like it you don't really can invited it just comes and if you just do different things than what you are wanting to build or what you need to build then it helps out a lot but to just you know sort of uh, make it easier to get inspired just do random stuff and not stare at your computer screen for an endless amount of time so so far i've talked about mindlessly searching images and then also doing other random stuff that might somehow spark inspiration. 
But then the third thing is... Well, this goes a little bit against what I said in the second technique that I used, but sometimes it's just start building. Like, well, does it actually go against it? Because I said, don't stare at your screen. <laughs> but sometimes it just works to just start building. Start plopping down walls. Start plopping down cubes. And that's how today's video actually started, because I had no idea how to build this uh, village or f staff facility village. And I just started building because I knew like, uh, all right, I need to start building. This is also in a way where YouTube and making videos work because I want to put out two videos a week. So I know that like, oh, if I didn't start building, I wouldn't have two videos out this week. I mean, I am barely getting two videos out this week because you will see this on Sunday. So it's like, it's the last day of the week, but it still counts for me. <laughs> but yeah, I knew like, oh, if I don't start building now, I won't get a video out. I will be extremely disappointed in myself then. So I just started building, just started building blocks. And then because I think in a way it's the human brain is again, very weird, but it's, you know, it looks to complete things. It looks to get closure on things. So if you start building, for me, at least in most cases, my brain along the way figures out like, oh, you might use this or might need this to make this look prettier. Oh, have you thought about this? Like my brain just then starts surfing up all these kinds of ideas. This is also why in Teenopolis, I usually set a lot of the times just, you know, start doing rock work, start doing things that you are familiar with, that you know how to build. Maybe it's not going to be the best building. But along the way, you might start to get inspiration to build stuff. So this is usually, I think, also the, the reason why sort of like my first attempts at buildings work. Because along the way, I just get inspiration to start building even more crazy things. To start building or using pieces in a different way than that they were intended to. Just because I'm like, oh, I need to start building things. Let's see if this piece works. Let's see if this piece works. Let's see if this piece works. In the end, it sort of works out fine. Sort of. Sometimes, of course, it doesn't work out. Like, I think I've already said this maybe twice, but none of these techniques are completely fail safe. There have been times where I've started building, I couldn't get the inspiration, and I just ended up frustrated. But then I think it's best to then just go back to the second technique and just start doing something differently just because, well, you can't really build well if you're like frustrated or angry or like you're trying to force inspiration to come because then it will just stay away. But yeah, sometimes just to start building helps a lot. And then it's like a little bit the last technique that I use to get inspiration on what to build mostly not really on how to build something but more on what to build and that is something that you guys have been asking about also which is if i have like some kind of history in architecture or just design and it's sort of there because i am studying a I think if you directly translate it, it's like urban design or urban planning, which is what I'm studying. And this gives me a little bit of like insight of like, oh, how does the city work? How is the city connected? How, you know, how do you make something in a city work? Also, this has given me like the, well, knowledge that it's sometimes best to just take a step back and look at things in like the greater image or the greater picture to make things aesthetically pleasing. So if you're wondering like, how do I do that? It's just something that I've been taught, but also something that I've just known for quite some time that like that works best for me to just sometimes drop everything, zoom back and look at like, oh, that tree needs to go away because it's obscuring some kind of view. Oh, this building needs to be larger just because it looks better if there's like a tower to it. I mean, that's usually how towers end up or start up with me <laughs> but yeah so there's a little bit of like history in like me well with me studying urban design and planning like it's not the best well it's not the 
direct name of what I'm studying, but then the direct name is like a little bit more specific. And I don't really know how to translate that because I'm bad with words. Yeah, that's just going to be it. But um, yes, it does help out a little bit. It doesn't, of course, give me any ideas on like, oh, how do I want to build it? It just gives me an idea of like, oh, I'm having a lot of like residential areas. I need to balance that out with like a little bit more commercial areas. So for, well, let's take the, this floating island as example. With the caravansary, I knew like the caravansary is a little bit like official style building, but also commercial style building. So I immediately thought like, all right, this is going to attract traders. This is going to attract caravans. This is going to attract people. People need to live somewhere, which is also a little bit in how this video came to be because I knew, all right, it makes sense to make the staff buildings into a village because probably a village would be able to pop up around this caravansary with like the accessibility of the water from the floating rocks as well. So also with the caravansary, I thought like, oh, you know, there are going to be different, well, economic classes to settlers, like they're going to be wealthy merchants, but they're going to be farmers. That's why right now we're and well, not the previous building, but I, if I'm correct, the building before that even, were like richer style buildings because these were usually probably, well, were probably built by traders or wealthy caravan merchant thingies. Yeah, sometimes it does give me inspiration on what to build with what I'm studying, but most of the time it just doesn't really give me inspiration on how to build. And this might be an interesting little bit of extra info because those were really just all the techniques that I used to get inspiration. So just to summarize it a little bit, just sometimes start searching for images mindlessly. Don't really have a goal for when you search for images or references. Sometimes, you know, doing random stuff also works. Like doing stuff that isn't planned, isn't planned to, you know, sometimes documentaries, sometimes other games work. Other times it's, what was I talking about again? Yeah, this is where the goldfish mind comes in. Maybe because I'm a little bit hungry by now. But yeah, sometimes it's just random things. Mostly it's just random things. Also, sometimes it's just start building things. Just... You know, do something, again, a little bit mindless with, like, building cubes, building rock work. And then it will just jump start your brain into, like, oh, I need to actually build stuff. Then your brain will look for, like, how to build stuff. So, yeah, sometimes it's just two random things. It's usually just my principle of, like, how to get inspiration. Which is maybe also the reason why I sometimes am a little bit more um, rambly. Just because like I have no clue how my brain got there. So it's a little bit uh, difficult sometimes to really explain like, oh, this is what went behind it. Because sometimes it's one of those four techniques. And sometimes it's a combination of all four. Sometimes it's just one. Sometimes it's just three. Sometimes it's even something completely different. But those are four are like the major techniques that I used to get inspiration so well I haven't really completed the summary I just realized but it's just like search for random images without really having a clear goal just mindlessly search images and don't be afraid to go into like all the suggested images because you might find something that interests you and might you know give you that initial spark of inspiration second thing is to you know, do some random or something different, such as for me, documentaries work a lot or other games work. But yeah, do something that you might know like, oh, this gives me a lot of inspiration. Don't just stare endlessly at your screen hoping that inspiration will come because it won't then. Like if you're expecting it, it won't come. That's just how inspiration works. At least in my case, it works that way. And then the third technique was to just sometimes start building. Yeah, this goes a little bit again against the other techniques that I use, but sometimes 
it just does work. Again, this entire video was based off of that third technique because I just had no clue like, all right, I need to build something, but I don't know what, and I don't know how. But I just started building, I just, and that's where a little bit of like the four technique comes in because I knew I needed to build a residential building, so yeah. The four technique is not really a technique to get inspiration, it's just a technique to get an idea of what you want to build. So it's just like, what makes logical sense of like, what would people need? But this usually works if you like, like me, approach Plan Zoo as a city builder. Because then you need to think about like, all right, what do the actual people who would live here need? So that's also what inspired Tianopolis and Osaru, like building them as actual cities and not so much as zoos really just gave me a lot of ideas of like, oh, I need to build this and this and this because otherwise a city would not function. So yeah, that's probably not as useful for anyone who wants to go for a really realistic zoo. Well, it might be, but not really in the way that you want it. You might need to change the techniques a little bit. And then, uh, yeah, I think that were all the four techniques that I used. There are obviously sometimes where it's just like randomly that I get inspiration. But yeah, that's basically it. So in the time that I have uh, rambled through all my techniques and just sort of explained it, I mean, we all know how good I am at explaining, so this might leave you with more questions than answers. But in the time we have gone through all those inspiration things, I uh, basically finished up the entire island. Sort of. Like, we're doing some floating islands here still. Like, I'm trying some new things with, like, less jungle, more dry desert areas. Of course, still with a lot of foliage, because that's just going to be a thing in... Kayan Al Bashar, that there's going to be a lot of foliage, even if it's small, like here. I, yeah, in the last video, I explained, like, oh, I have three different layers when it comes to, like, foliage, like ground covering, bushes, and trees. Here, the second layer with all the bushes is a little bit less. And also, well, the trees are not that much less, but they're just a little bit more. Well, they don't have that second layer to build up from also yes one of the islands is on a tilt because i just thought it would be a little bit more fun than all flat islands but of course nature goes just goes up to the sun so all the trees were still straight and upwards but yeah i really hope actually that this was maybe useful to you guys or you might again be as conf well even more confused than before but yeah the techniques usually work a quite well for me at least but yeah let me know if the if any of them could work for you or if you are using something similar or have something completely new because i do know that especially for like creative games like plant zoo like plant coaster and others like having the inspiration to build is sometimes the hardest thing about the game. Like sometimes the building is easier than, you know, getting that inspiration to actually start building. So please do tell down below what you guys do when it comes to inspiration and such so that we might help each other out. Like maybe I will find some new techniques or maybe one of these te techniques that I talked about might help you. Yeah, let's just make this video a little bit less narcissistic and just make it about what techniques do you guys use and how can we help each other by basically sharing techniques to get inspiration so with that i'm going to jump into some real-time footage because we have finished the island and i do realize that it's a little bit too fast with the speed bills to actually give you an overview so i will see you in probably five seconds hey again so we're right now at the entrance of the floating caravansary island right at the place where you probably connect it if you were to download and place this floating island in your own zoo and it is a dead end island with that i mean there is no other place where you know you could connect the floating island without any modifications to other parts of the zoo it all goes from this one entrance so that makes sense for kayan al-bashar because 
It's probably going to go at some edge of Kayan al-Bashar instead of like the center. But yeah, there hasn't been a lot of changes to the island since what you saw. There might be some more. Mostly to get it ready for putting it on the workshop. But also because there are some minor tweaks that I still want to do. But that are like so minor that I didn't think it would be as important to show you guys. I mean, the most major change so far that you guys haven't seen is, uh, well, the warning floating rock sign, which previously said warning flying rocks. So now it correctly states floating rocks, because flying rocks just for me implies a lot more action. And I just think that these rocks would just be gently floating up in the air, even though there's one exception, which one caravan unfortunately found out so yeah now the sign just correctly states the floating rocks also you might hear the camels in the background this is one of the reasons why i didn't want to really go into like a real time section because you would just constantly hear them also you will probably hear the alarm because the smaller or the juvenile camels are the best way to find out if there's any escape point in the habitat. So that's also going to be changed. It's just probably adding like two rocks just to make any, like they can jump on the edge of the rocks. So they don't jump off the island or something like that. None of the animals do that, luckily. Otherwise this zoo was going to be doomed to fail. <laughs> but yeah, they just, the adult ones can't escape. The Baby ones can. But now back to the buildings. So the caravan tree, as I said, nothing has changed besides, well, I'm going to maybe add a little bit more clutter in here because it's just a little bit bare bones. It's a little bit, uh, it just feels a little bit too empty right now. So I'm probably going to change that. But I'm really happy with how it's not completely the same as the reference building in Iran and another camel has found an escape point. Again, if you want to find any escape points in your habitat, get a baby camel. They somehow find it every time and I don't know how because all the adults ones can't escape but the baby ones for some reason do, which is annoying. So, uh, yeah, maybe don't have any baby camels in that habitat. But yeah, this is the main view for the camels, for the guests. And I have... This is the first time that it has happened. You guys also saw that, right? How? But yeah, you get a very up-close uh, shot of... Uh, one of the camels, which is now going to trigger the alarm. But yeah, so I need to change that. <laughs> and uh, I didn't find it out really until like I tried to do any... I... <laughs> he just wants to be with us. But uh, yeah, let's uh, sadly... Alright, bye bye. <laughs> But uh, let's ignore him for a while. This is going to be changed when I put it on the workshop. That's why when you watch this video, it might not yet be in the workshop just because, uh, well, I think he might still be in here. Yes, I, he's just saying hi. He just wants to follow us around and explore the entire island. But yeah, I originally, thought that this oasis would be kind of a waste of space and just really unnecessary oh well one of them has been uh, caught but um i have no idea what's happening with the baby camels but uh, they can swim but yeah they usually just well the as you can see the adult ones almost completely or only use these or this oasis to drink they do have like a drinking station inside their stable but they only use this one i do now also i think know how these escape 
So, um, yeah, camels can swim. And also somehow get on that edge and then escape. So, uh, yeah, you will hear the alarm bells ring a lot probably this time. Because, uh, yeah, they, um, I wasn't even aware that this was an escape point. Didn't even show on the heat map or the uh, filter. But uh, let's just forget him for a while. He just wants attention. So this is the second star village. Kind of tiny star village. Just a little bit of a farm and a higher end building. With some floating rocks. And when I put this in Kayan Al-Bashar. I will probably do something with this fuel line. Or sideline. Just because it's just so amazing. Like I want to do something here. Not on the island itself. But just you know. Maybe like. Um, I think the ancient ruins. Is still the main contender when it came to the ball I put up yesterday so maybe it's going to be there you know even though the guests will probably not come here because staff facilities are just like uh, anti-guest things but yeah so going back from the second star village I really like just the floating rocks with the waterfalls now for this star village it was mainly just like try to keep it secluded but not so that you would really notice like, oh, this is a backstage area. Like, I try to avoid it with everything I built. Like, well, it's realistically a, probably a little bit more accurate to have this a little bit more like backstage area feel. But I approach this as a city builder, so you're not going to get that from me. But yeah, so this is the first floating island with only one function to it also I added a little bit of like uh, you know they need need to get water here and because this is a higher end building or a higher end home I didn't think they would just you know walk all the way around here so I made some kind of uh, thingy to make it look like they could gather water from here so yeah making uh, the waterfall a little bit more useful but uh, the star village is a little bit um, this is probably like the thing that I might want to achieve with Caravansary because it just feels a lot more alive. Even though it's mainly pots and I want to have a little bit more crates and such. I haven't heard the alarm in a while so I'm kind of thinking that either all the baby camels have escaped or they are just making new plans to escape. Every time I go into some real time play time thingy they do something just happens the last time a red panda just pooped right in front of us and actually on the first try of making this real time part of the video another camel also pooped in front of us but yeah the habitat is kind of mostly a desert they this is strange actually because most of the time they don't spend their time here hi also, I don't spend a lot of time here because of, let's just say, these drive me nuts because camels are way louder than I imagined. In the background there, you will see another baby camel trying to escape. I now know though that that's an escape point, so that will be changed. But yeah, the only thing that stands out here is really just this tree, which was meant to. If anyone is really watching this video, can you say how many times a baby camel has escaped via this route? I mean, I already hear the alarm again. Yeah. Why is he doing that? But that's it for this island. Well, quickly to state. So again, well, wrong button, but... It's not going to be directly on the workshop as this video goes live because, well, you get the entire island, but you get that because this habitat that surrounds the entire island is what you basically download, which includes this entire island. However, you would need to do your own pods and your own camel habitat, but the camel habitat is not that difficult. It's mainly just fence here and the fence there. And of course I'm going to make it escape proof because 
I think that was like the fifth time that one of them escaped via that route, which I'd never seen them do before. Mostly they stick around the edges and then just go over the line. Like they can't just jump off the island, luckily. But anyway, so that's going to be it for today. I'm going to make some guides for when you download this well, blueprint or habitat if I'm going to be able to put it on the workshop so that you can easily do the parts and the habitat. But again, that's going to be it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, I hope to see you back in the next one. Don't forget to hit the like or the subscribe button if you enjoy, well, basically my videos so far. And I hope you all have an amazing remainder of your weekend. And I hope your Mondays won't be too hard. So anyway, bye-bye.